Today we're going to look at student work together. We'll be using a protocol called the Atlas Protocol to analyze one piece of student work deeply. Through this protocol, we'll be noting our observations, making some inferences about what students have been learning, and finally make implications for instructional next steps. As we work through this protocol, I invite you to have a printout of the Atlas Protocol handy so that you can refer to each step as we do it. I also invite you to bring a piece of student work of your own so that you can analyze it with me. If you'd like to have a team present so that you can do this together, that also would be a great suggestion. As we work through this protocol, I'll also be using a piece of student work to model what the protocol conversation may sound like. Feel free to pause this recording along the way so that you can engage in rich conversation about the student work. Let's begin. The first step entails introductions. We start by introducing our norms. Norms are agreements that we make when we have collaborative conversation so that our conversation is safe, effective, and productive towards our task. In this case, if your school doesn't have norms established, you may want to think about what will best help support this conversation. An example of a norm would be to share the air, meaning that all voices are heard and everyone participates. Take a few moments to identify some norms or review your existing norms for our looking at student work protocol. The second thing that we're going to do as an introduction is to introduce the student work. This is a brief overview, less than a minute, of the task and the target. It's not an in-depth analysis of the student, him, him or herself, nor is it a compilation of all the skills that should be reflected in the piece of student work that we're looking at. So as an example, the piece of student work that I'll be looking at today is a piece of fourth grade writing. The learning target is, I can write an opinion piece that supports a point of view with reasons and information. The piece of student work that I'm looking at is from Charles, and I'm just going to read you the first part so that you know what I'm analyzing today. If I was a grown-up and I could choose any community to live in, I would choose a rural community. The first reason I would like to live in a rural community is because you have huge yards front and back. So if I had kids and they whine, I wouldn't want to drive 40 or 50 miles just to buy toys. So I could just let them outside to play. And that's the first reason I want to live in a rural community. If you're the presenting teacher, or if you're doing this on your own, go ahead and think about what your learning targets are and what the task is that you're presenting. Step two is about observation. So in facilitating this protocol, the question that we ask is, what do you see in this student work? This is an opportunity for the presenting teacher to be silent if the rest of the team can notice the observations. If you're doing this on your own, think carefully about what you actually see in the student work. In the piece that I'm looking at, an example of what I see, I see a clear opinion statement. So if I was a grown-up and I could choose any community to live in, I would choose a rural community. I also notice transitional statements to introduce each reason. The first reason I would like to live in a rural community. In your student work piece, look through it, take about five minutes, and notice what are the observations that you see in the student work. The third step in the Atlas Protocol is to take on the student perspective and think about what is the student working on based on what you can infer from the student work. In the case of my piece, as I look at it, I would infer that the student is working on creating an opinion statement, crafting a topic sentence, identifying reasons to support the opinion, and using transitional statements like the first reason to identify their reasons. I can point to those things on this paper as observations, okay? Go ahead and look at your student work now and think about what, from the student point of view, do you think that they've been working on? The fourth step is when we talk about the implications for classroom practice. We can think about what instructional steps would be next for the students based on what we see from student work. Also consider at this point the target and how does this piece of student work fully meet the learning target that was presented? So in my example, the learning target was, I can write an opinion piece that supports a point of view with reasons and information. As I read back over the student work, 
What I notice is there's an opinion statement, there are clear reasons, but when I look at the information that supports those reasons, specifically the example of, so if I had kids and they whine, I wouldn't want to drive 40 or 50 miles just to buy toys so I could just let them outside to play. All those reasons seem very, very specific towards the overall reason uh, of wanting to live in a rural community because you have huge yards. And so a next step might be to encourage a student to think about what are more generalized details or information to support those reasons instead of very, very case specific. Go ahead and look at your student work. What implications for instructional next steps do you see? The last step is to reflect on the Atlas protocol. We do this both in terms of what we've learned from student work and from the protocol as a whole. So if there's a presenting teacher, now is the opportunity for him or her to respond. To share out what are the observations that they heard, what are the implications and inferences that they heard that really resonated with them, as well as to own what is his or her next step in terms of instructional planning. The second step of the reflection phase is also to have the group reflect on what was learned about learning assessment and how, lo how looking at student work as a whole supports professional learning. Take some time to hear from the presenting teacher about what he or she learned, as well as to discuss next steps for instruction. And finally, debrief the protocol as a whole about how it helped inform everyone's practice in your group. Thanks for participating in the Atlas protocol today. As you go through it, you may find that you have some unique questions or additions that you want to make to it, or possibly adjust the time frames. In the end, make sure that student work is at the center of it, and I hope it supports your practice.